Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And you're listening to The Drop, our weekly podcast that helps you get through the miles. Mm-hmm. We're both wearing red, reddish sweatshirts. I'm how- wearing a uh, Believe in the Run sweatshirt. Mm-hmm. That's more of a, what was the color? salmon I'd say Nantucket red. <laughs> yeah. Past, is it pastel? Uh, no, it's All just, right. it's like a faded red, okay. you know, like if you were out <laughs> on an island in, or Cape Cod. Yeah. Speaking of Cape Cod, um, <laughs> you remember our friends that did a medal? Yeah. Yeah. Well. It got a lot of reaction. It did get a lot of reaction. We got a lot of people sending us their pictures of their medal because they were like, they were laughing out loud when they heard it. But you know, it was kind of cool. One, both Robbie and I spoke to them independently, the race people, and both of us said, hey, I think you should lean into ugly metals and just make that your thing. Yeah. And uh, maybe they're going to consider doing that. But I will tell you, they passed along a code for 10% off their race. And this oh, was yeah? not a planned. Was this planned? No. No, this is not a sponsored thing. We just thought That's since hilarious. we bashed them so bad that um, <laughs> we, that we would be nice enough to to uh, share a 10% discount code Uh on any race. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. The uh, Cape Cod Marathon um, that's uh, like Falmouth Running okay. Club. But the, the it's all capitals. The Drop 2024. Nice. Sign up. There's 50 uses. So the first 50 people who oh, really? snag that up can get a discount, 10% discount. On I'm sure it's stuff. a beautiful race because it's on Cape Cod. How could it not be? Well, you've run. The only problem is like you've run the Falmouth. Falmouth, foul mouth. Yeah, you've run the Something Falmouth mouth. seven miler. Yeah, not exactly flat. No, not at all. But kind of cool. I like yeah, it. beautiful for sure. Oh yeah, one of the m- most beautiful courses. Wow, is that even legal? What Ralphie's doing to you? No, like okay. what is happening, dude? Yeah, dude. Yeah, he acts like he's getting off the Titanic and needs to get into a life raft. No, like, like you're all sinking. I feel like it might be sinking. This is podcast is a sinking ship. Let's yes. be real. Rats are leaving. Good news is I think I just got our internet working. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Well, that's you got know. a green light on it over there. Yeah. I mean, it's working on mine. Okay. We've been, yeah. we've been, Meg's been, uh, what do you call it? Product Upgrading support. our system. I don't know, but I'm not the technical person in this office and I have no idea why I'm doing it. But. Tech who is, support. Who is a technical person? I used to be, me? I used to be a technical person and then and it just has left me. <laughs> like, wow. like, how? like it, it I don't know what it is. It's it's with specific things. So we have a internet like, I guess relay system at the house, uh-huh. and I set it up the first time, and then it just stopped working. Guess who gets to fix it every time the internet uh-huh. goes out? Mm-hmm. So now it's Megan. What's crazy is that I took like two years of computer networking courses because I thought that's what I, I wanted to do: cybersecurity. That'd this be is crazy. this is ten years ago. Mm-hmm. I took night classes for two years to get a Cisco certification. And then I realized at the end of that two years that I hated it more than anything. Mm. And I was just like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> so you did the whole two years? Yeah. Like it was a lot of, it was a ho- really hard night classes. Wow. I got it for free because Kimmy worked at community college. So I was like, I might as well just go back. Like, Take And then I did course. development, web development stuff. And that actually was useful. Yeah. But, but yeah, but I hate it. I hate net- computer networking and whatever Meg's doing. Yeah. <laughs> This stuff I just But I can do it. If you yeah. need me to do it, Meg, just ask. If you need me to do it, just ask Robbie. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's mad because I didn't say that a half an hour ago. I yeah. just I just I've learned that I just do things if I want them to get done and that's how it works. There you go. And yeah. that's the story of Megan Murray's life. Sounds good. <laughs> I was telling my son the origin story of Megan and how she hated me when she first met me. So. Just when she first met you? Yeah, it circled back. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> the horseshoe horseshoe effect. Yeah. All right, so we're here. Um, what's going on? I don't know. Some people were doing some running. Do we need to do any uh, ads before we uh, roll in? Uh, no, our element spot will be on here, but I will plug them because they've been saving my life through this cold. Yeah, you still sounds like you still have it. It's, Dude, it's like lingering forever. Lingerer, man. Little cranberries action. Last there. night is the first night that one of us didn't sleep on the couch because my coughing was so bad all night. Sometimes I like sleeping on the couch. It's like a change of pace. It just it's like almost like you're camping. Yeah, it is kind of like that. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, you wake That's up, you're like, lining. where am I? 
Oh, go. yeah. I think it does because when I was in the band, I slept on so many couches and floors. I think it kind of, it's nostalgia. a little bit of a nostalgic factor for me. I like it. I don't know. For me, it was Megan just kept coughing and waking me up and I had a 20 mile run the next day. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's, I think I'll just go to the couch. That's never good. At 3 a.m. in the morning. Well, so I made the mistake of taking NyQuil at three in the morning, nice. which is too. That's a Robbie move too, if I ever heard too one. Too late or too early, however you want to phrase <laughs> yeah. it. Like that is absolutely not the right time to take that. I think I did that before the Tokyo Marathon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> melatonin. I did take melatonin at like 3 a.m. Horrible yeah. idea. I was like walking the dog and I also had a long run and I was like, why am I so tired? And then I realized you were robo tripping yeah. through your long run. I mean, honestly, I've been on cold meds and Advil for like eight days in a row, like just every four hours. That's what's happening. Well, you did 21 miles yesterday. <laughs> she was supposed to do 22, but I was just done. Loser. <laughs> but anyway, it was kind of cool because this weekend it worked out perfect. Coach Caster had my long run on Sunday and because the weather on Saturday was just crappy. Yeah, good thing we didn't have to run in that. Yeah, who wants to run in that? <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, speaking of sleep, the night before the 50K, I was like, I'm going to get a good night's sleep, do all that. And for some reason, the trains were going nonstop that night. And as I'm trying to fall asleep, you know, when trains are stopped and then start and then all the cars like bang together and it's so loud, mm -hmm. that kept happening. And then I kept waking up throughout the night, but I did get decent sleep. Wait, you don't do a sound machine or anything? I do, but it's like, I do a fan, but it just cuts through. Like, you know when you're a little bit, you're yeah. trying to fall asleep and you're a little bit like I do. on edge? I do, but. So every little noise. Mm -hmm. We got to get you like what we use. What is that thing called? No, we the have dome. Like, we have too much. There's, you would the dome? die. Dome. Biodome. Go look up at Amazon domes. They, it's, just a, it's just a noise machine. How I found out about these is, Somebody gave me one when Theo was born. Oh, my kids have one of those. Yeah, like yeah. the little, and it looks like a little Star Wars droid yeah. on the floor. That thing can kill anything. But, yeah, I mean, I use my phone sometimes, like the white noise app, which usually works. Yeah, yeah but this same. is, you throw this thing on, it's on. We have, at times, <laughs> Megan, we have traveled with it. Okay, yeah. I mean, whatever. Anyways, so... Yeah, 50K Saturday morning. Of course, it didn't rain all last week or this week. And it was for that six hour block. It literally was that six hours. Only that six hours. It was rain, I don't know, two inches or something ridiculous. I had eight miles that day. You know where I did them? I, I know. Yeah, because I saw your Strava. And there was no map. <laughs> <laughs> There's no map. I ran it. outside. Did you? Yeah. Let me see. <laughs> what was the deal? And I know that I made the right choice. Yeah, I came back. I was so sad, Legs like a drowned like a rat. Wet rat. It was, and you know, the worst thing is too with a race is that you have to be outside. Mm -hmm. They have a pavilion there, but you're still walking to there, and, and you're, you're just, splashing up. You're wet as soon as you get out of your car. Mm -hmm. And I did have the Gore-Tex rain jacket on, and the good news is that it wasn't forty degrees. It was low 50s so at least maybe that's a, a good thing it still seemed cold yeah it, was, it felt cold and like once you get wet i was like thinking the hands get wet it's that cold that gets into the bones mm -hmm. you know where you just can't shake it off and yeah so so the, um went up to the hat 50k and saw some you know the faster bastards doing it and some other people we knew and for anyone who doesn't know this the, the way it starts, it's like in an open field where you line up like you're in Braveheart. Yeah, it's that's a good description wild. of it. I was like Gettysburg, yeah, Braveheart. Pickett's Charge. Yeah. And there's a dude who plays the bagpipes, kind of, which is a, a pretty awesome way to start the race. And then you just kind of take off. Um, and so, yeah, within a minute, your feet are soaked. And then we there's like a three-mile loop. And then two 14 mile loops. Are you going to tell people what you, you chose to wear to get your feet wet? Yeah. So I started out. Okay. So I started out with Topo Athletic Mountain Racer 3, just because I, I've run a 50 miler in the Mountain Racer 1. And I just like the way it fits and feels. It's lightweight, has good traction, Vibram lugs, um, fits well, kind of like those things that you want. I didn't, I hadn't worn this pair before, which is, probably a mistake um but i was like whatever i'll pack another pair of shoes and i packed the brooks catamount three 
Uh, but then Mac, who runs with us, he had my pair of Nike Ultra Flies that I left at the Baltimore Half Marathon, so he brought them with. So that was another pair just in case. So I ran with the Topo Athletic first. and Explain the course because it, it starts off in loops, but there's different distances of the loops. Yeah. No, I said that. There's like a th- mini three-mile oh, loop, you did? Okay, and then it's yeah. a two fourteens. Um, and the crazy thing, when you – the worst part is – packing for a race like that because you're going to want to change at the halfway point at least your shirt and maybe shoes or socks um and then for after the race you want to have a full change of clothes and multiple layers and i brought an entire duffel bag yeah. to hat before i brought the north face the north north face like base camp duffel and just filled it up with stuff plus you know, ibuprofen, deodorant, gels, hydration, like all the everything. It's so much to pack. Like, I feel like I'm packing for, for a, like trip. a yeah. week long yeah. trip. And and anyway, so so we start out the race with running with Ryan Detter, one of our friends, and felt pretty good, pretty slow pace to begin with. We were kind of behind some people that was slow and uh, that were slow. And yeah, got into the woods. And as soon as we got in the woods, it's been raining for several hours at this point. The trails are just rivers, like cascading down. <laughs> and I'm obviously trying to be a little cautious with the ankles. So trying not to bomb any downhills or anything, which the traction was really good on the shoes, but I can't see like under all the water. I am had to like, so I'm trying to step to the sides, but you know, that's really pointless because it's all mud. And, um, so yeah, so r- finished, so let's see the first loop, s- the Creek crossings were interesting. It was up to mid thighs, uh, at that, just on the first loop and it's still pouring rain the whole time. Mm. And so I'm just doing the best that I can just kind of taking it easy. I did feel pretty good and wanted to you know, push the pace a little bit. So I separated from Ryan around mile eight and just went off on my own. And again, what I love about this course is that at mile nine or 10, there's a road section that's downhill for two miles, which, and how many times have you run this, Thomas? Uh, I think it's seven or eight times. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. So. But that that road, depending on conditions, can either be loose gravel or packed hard like cement. Yeah. it's It was fine to me. Um, it was, the problem was that, that the topo shoe that I was wearing, the rock plate in it really was kind of harsh. There's not a lot of cushion on that shoe. So especially in the road sections. And you're going at a downhill pitch on that. Yeah. Yeah. The whole way. Um, which is nice because you can get some extra minutes and stuff, but it started to kind of like hurt the ball of my foot on both feet. And so, so you did one of the big loops then, because you don't do that road in the first three. Right. So this yeah. is on the big loops. This is like mile 10. Okay. And again, it's pouring rain and the, the creeks are rushing. I got to, so there's an aid station at mile 12. That's pretty solid. I mean, they're all, the aid stations is that, are Which ones, what mile are you at where it's got the long one by the parking lot? Yeah, that's the one. That mile I, that's, 12. That's the one. 26 or whatever. Yeah. That was the one where they're like, hey, if you want to get under this time, you better hustle up. Yeah, it's, the like la- the, it's yeah. technically the last one. Yeah. And so, but I, I I had drank Element the night before. So I took a a full thing of Element the night before. That morning had eaten like peanut butter toast with honey and uh, bananas and stuff. And then I, I think I had scratch in my one water bottle. And I was fueling like with, uh, so I did goo and goo roctanes like a, on and off. So I was doing that every 45 minutes because I was in, I was eating at every A station too. So I'd eat French fries, Sour Patch Kids, whatever, Coke. Did you have any pierogies? Pierogies, yeah, for sure. At the A station. So I figured a goo every 45 minutes would be pretty, like a good compliment. Yeah, if you can get that down. Yeah. And so, but then... You know, I was I always get horrible headaches and everything else because of I guess sodium, <laughs> lack of sodium. So at the mile twelve aid station, I 
I was like, I need salt. And the only thing they had was a bowl of table salt to like roll your French fries in. Yeah. And so I just took a, the bowl and just poured it into a, like a cup. And it was, it was like that much no. salt. It was probably, it was at least a tablespoon. That's bad. And then I just mixed it with water and like stirred it up and just pound, took it to the face. Oh, oh. Dude, it was so, <laughs> you think elements bad? That was like 10 elements in one. And literally. Might have been a, like, I guess in hindsight, I was probably playing with fire because yeah. that's a lot of salt. Like that could have hit, I hit your bowels funny. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I looked it up. It was definitely a tablespoon. And I looked it up online like yesterday. And I think that's about 7,500 milligrams of salt. Which would be seven elements or six elements. Yeah. 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 At least that's five. too many. <laughs> well, anyway, so... After that, full disclosure, I was a little bit nauseous. Not to the, I've been, I've had worse for sure in a race. That's like, that's like when you're in the ocean though and you like get the accidentally hole, yeah. get <laughs> tastes, hit by a wave. And, it tastes like that. Yeah. <laughs> Except it wasn't accidental. But yeah, so I was riding that wave for a couple miles and I was getting a little like, a little nauseous, a little down, but not terrible. Right. Um, and then the, but the course, again, it was just super sloppy and muddy. I was going to say, like, when you leave that one aid station, you go back. It's like you come all the way downhill. You come down the road. Mm -hmm. You hit that aid station. And then you're going back up for a climb. Right. And I've always remembered, even on dry days, it was kind of muddy and crappy right after you leave that aid station. Yeah. Like there's like an area. Yeah. Like almost like a marsh. Yeah. What was that like in the rain? Yeah. I mean, you were... It was up to your above your ankles, and it just yeah. of mud. Yeah, Ugh. and then there's that. Remember that part? It's the orchard. Yeah, that's the worst part of the course. Yeah, because it was all it's this slick mud that you can't, and it's an angle that you're yeah, and you're, and it's uphill, and so you're like your legs are sliding out from under you every step you take. So I'm actually surprised, like your hip flexors. Yeah, that was not not great. Are you sore? Oh, like in yeah. weird places. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> What's a weird place, Meg? I don't know, like yeah. where you like aren't normally sore from running. All the it's places, like yeah. Using different muscles. Yeah, I think the hip flexors weren't doing too great. Um, but anyway, so then I do love that race because when you get to the quote unquote halfway point, you're at mile seventeen. And shout out to Sam Canner from Believe Run Club. He was there in the pavilion, and dude. Where that pavilion is on the top of the hill, the wind was just oh, pummeling no. it like through there. And it was, he was hanging out there helping anyone who came through, like the faster bastards or bleed people. And it was awesome because I had to try and change real quick. And for some reason, I changed my socks, which is pointless. No, it, I do uh, think a fresh pair of socks at that race, <laughs> there's something psychologically that good is about true. It. But I changed, um, like my rain jacket, I put on the John G rain jacket and then that satisfy Merino, which was the perfect pairing. Um, and then he like brought, brought over like Gatorade and pierogies and stuff for me, which was really nice of him. And then I changed to the Nike ultra fly because my feet were really were kind of hurting at that point. So I needed, I was just like, I know the traction isn't as good on the ultra fly and those conditions, but also nothing, nothing is. And the comfort like would help a lot. For that nice bed of Zoom X. All right, first check in. As you can tell from Robbie, like nothing was going to stop that train. He was out there in the rain, in the mud. And you probably would get at the start, you'd be like, man, I don't really feel like doing this. I don't want to do it. I'm going to get my feet wet. My hands are going to be cold. I mean, it was really gnarly conditions. Like I remember waking up, having my coffee and thinking, man, Robbie's out there in the rain right now. And he did it, and not only did he do it, but he had a good time doing it. And the day was a great day, and probably it's going to be a core memory for him as far as running goes. So maybe those days when we least want to go out there are the days when we should get excited about getting out there. I don't know, just something to think about. And honestly, I was feeling pretty good. Like I feel like last time I ran that, I was a little... Like coming into 18, 17, it was a little down, but that was also a rough day. But 
I that was hot out in the last oh, time. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, okay, it was like yeah. 75 degrees. This race, just in case you don't know, it's it's had everything from 70 degree days to yeah. 10 degree days to snow. This one, torrential downpours. Like Maryland spring yeah. is basically Russian roulette. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it really you really don't know what you're gonna get. Um and then so I came out of the aid station and I couldn't feel my feet or my hands. Mm. And I was freezing because just change stopping to change for five minutes, take my shirt off and everything was I was shivering. And so uh thank God it stopped raining raining shortly thereafter. So You're able to warm up. Then I was able to warm up. I f- blood came back in my feet and my hands and then it was felt awesome just as far as you know it still sucked because it was muddy like still muddy but at least there wasn't rivers coming down the trail so then right after the 18 mark when you're coming down that big hill and down to the creek again they shut off the creek crossings because apparently somebody told me that there was a there was a woman there running it who was like four two or something or like she's pretty sure i think i know who it was i saw her uh four six and the water was either like up to her neck or above her head oh when gosh. she went to the creek and it was raging and so so how did you get around so they they made you they rerouted you like two-thirds of a mile or so <laughs> like three or three quarters of a mile around up to the road so you had to go across a bridge, get on a road and then come back on the other side. Now there's at least two like bigger water crossings. Mm-hmm. I know there's some smaller ones that probably at yeah, that this fine. day that were a little deeper, but they're probably still like shin deep. Yeah. Yeah. That was fine. But yeah, there's two of them that I would say like, even if it's regular, just regular weather, mm-hmm. it's going to be up to your thighs. Those are the ones that were... Yeah, they shut those down. So they rerouted both of those. The one, I don't think, had any extra mileage, really. But I knew it was going to be more, which is kind of annoying. And So you ran over 50K? Yeah, it was like closer to 32 32 miles. Um, You know, Meg's run this race, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always forget that you've also run it the same amount. Yeah. Uh, uh, Yeah, I don't know the same amount. Oh, but a bunch of times. She's run it better (laughs) (laughs) yeah so then i um knowing that it was going to add some extra miles it was a little annoying but i was like as long as you get to that field you know the field's coming up with the extra three i kind of hate the field i hate the field too yeah it felt like it lasts forever i love it because you can see you you can see it but it's like and the wind Yeah. yeah oh yeah that was the other thing it came out of the one not the field at the finish, but the other field it came out of the woods and it was like a direct headwind. Yeah. Oh. Like, dude, what the hell? That, and that's when I was like, that's the one. There's two that I would say when you came out, the first one you come out in the field and you have to run around the edge mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. That one, it's at a slope. So I'm guessing that with mud, you're like fighting to just stay upright. Yeah. That was and annoying. then you come when you're close to getting towards the finish line again, you pop out into not the main field when you're really close to the right, I know. thing, but the one that's up top. And that one is also at an angle that yeah. is just like hard to... It's that tiny single track. Yeah. And it's hard to keep your feet in it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it was a lot of trying to figure out where to run. And, but I felt good. Like the crazy- Are you solo at this point? Like, are you talking? Yeah, I mean, okay. I saw some people, uh, I forget this one girl's name, Envy, who was who had come to Sufferfest last year at Oregon Ridge. And she's been to some Believe, I think, of great, great events. So I talked with her for a little. She was running in the A6 Trabuco Max, uh, as was Ryan. And so I talked with her and then just randomly, you know, would talk to some people. But mostly it was by myself. Pretty, It was pretty spread out then by the end. And, um, but then coming through, so when I hit that road section the second time, um, I think I took a goo right before it and just the ultra fly with the road section, dude, it felt so good. Just, just let the gravity open go. Open it up and kind of pick up the pace. I think I ran a couple miles at around like an 840 pace for like, that's mile 26. So I was feeling pretty good. And then, 
And then just from there, you only have five miles left or the, at the A station or approximately. It's a, it, when you say only five miles left, <laughs> it's not, not road five no, miles no, no, left. No, 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 it's, no. It's a lot of vert and uphill and terrible conditions. But knowing that you're in the sort of home stretch. Yeah. I felt like, and I felt like running down that road in the ultra flies, like I, I finally got a groove back. So where I was just like, Loose I feel enough. good. Uh, and then Ryan's uh, wife, Amanda, was at that aid station. And I was like, can you can you take my vest and my jacket? Because I had five miles left. I was like, I can do I can do this. So that felt so nice to just be like free of all the like outer layers and just be able to run with nothing. And so which was maybe maybe a mistake because it's still about an hour and 15 minutes. And I was like, I probably should have brought water a little bit of water with or like a snack. Especially after all that salt. <laughs> yeah. And so then I was running on the trail and someone had dropped some trash. So I was like, I'll pick it up. I'll be the good guy. And it was a like some sort of gummy pack. Oh, gosh. Like an orange gummy. You didn't oh, eat it. And I was like. Oh, Robbie. I opened it up. And I was like, "Oh, there's it's still good. It's not <laughs> it's not covered in mud. Like it's it was clean, protected from no. the elements." And you ate it. I ate it. Okay. But I was like, I mean, it was a runner that dropped it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just I mean, it was perfectly fine. Uh-huh. And uh and then like I cannot imagine like if you were my toddler. <laughs> I mean, put that down. Put that. No, put it down. I was like, get this, that out of your mouth. This could be the thing that saves me. I <laughs> okay. might need this. Because did it? Was it? I think it did, honestly. Okay. I think it helped because the last mile was a little bit rough. I was like, if I didn't have that. And then uh, like a mile shortly thereafter, Matt Kacharski was on in the middle of the trail with Peter and they were just hanging out like uh, it's like in the middle of the woods. Congrat, you know encouraging us on and he had uh some beer like a founders all day ipa so i just drank some of that because i was like that's probably good for water or hydration or sure, something yeah at that point what do you <laughs> you had a mile it's three miles left oh, three okay yeah and and then from there on i was just like let's do this thing felt pretty good and, and that, that's what i was like pretty stoked about because i i wasn't even close to my time of course like probably but this was a pr for you wasn't it no it was like an hour slower than my pr <laughs> oh i thought it that's like, the weird thing on strava it said it was a pr but i think it was because the last one it was 30.99 <laughs> that last hat i uh, did like i think it uh, strava taxed me mm. so it didn't count as a 50k um and so yeah this was like an hour slower than my pr okay and but i felt like i couldn't do anything like I just didn't think I could run any faster because I didn't want to jeopardize. Well, it, when it's wet like that, yeah. you can't bomb the downhills because yeah. you can't get good footing. I can't. Some people can. Well, I couldn't believe but, the yeah. top The top guys was is like a 422, 427. Yeah. And they're normally like around a four hour mm-hmm. closer to that. So even they were like 15 yeah. minutes off. So Chris Hadrick, who runs with Bleed Run Club, he won and faster bastards he won with a 422 he also wore the nike ultra fly um which i just can't conceive in my mind because it was basically two and a half hours faster than i ran it <laughs> and i'm like that is just crazy to me dude i one time we ran it uh caleb maslin ran it in like three hours and something yeah and yeah, like a seven minute mile yeah be unfathomable on on hat Right. You know the ups and downs there. Yeah, I mean, the elevation on my Strava was 5, 000, uh, close to 5,000 feet of elevation gain. I also saw other people that said 6,000, so Meg, what it was your um, What was your, when you came in second place, what was your time? I don't think I ever came in second place. I think one time I came in third, but it was around five hours. Oh, I thought you were in second place. You tied for second place with um, oh, maybe. I don't Katie really Rybar. That was so long ago. Yeah. Um, But yeah, that was... I mean, I felt what I took away from it, even though it wasn't my time, of course, is that I felt awesome the whole time. Like I never had a down. That's moment. so good. I was a little bit like after I took the salt and coke and everything, like you know, just a little bit nauseous. Not like I've been much more nauseous before in a race, 
But from mile 18 on, I felt amazing. So that's good. Yeah. Coming up for Boston. So I felt like I fueled well um, and did everything right in that regard. I mean, seven hours is a long time or yeah. just under to yeah. be doing anything. <laughs> so yeah. I can feel good at the end of a seven hour thing. I didn't, what was the cutoff? Like, what's the cutoff time? I don't know. Cause there was people coming in an hour after me for sure. See, I used to think that seven hours was the cutoff time. My out of my head. They might I think changed. it's like eight or nine. Maybe it's eight. Cause I just remember one friend one time almost being cut off. Maybe he was coming in at like seven fifty. And something. they might have yeah. also added time for the conditions and cause they made sure. the course longer. Um, and, but I, what I look, like I said, feeling good the whole time and not doing that thing where you're checking your watch every 10th of a mile. Mm -hmm. Cause that's the worst when you're like looking at your watch and being like, how did I only go a 10th of a mile? Well, see, like that's I'm the gone. thing I, I, <laughs> I hate that. That's what I like about trail running is I'm so busy looking at my feet and so busy, like trying to navigate the terrain that a lot of times the miles will just kind of cruise by, mm -hmm. but also like yeah. on hat you've done the loop. So it's not like you're like, how much further do I have to go? Uh -huh. You know, Pretty much like, okay, I have, it, you know, maybe, maybe it's cause this is your second time running it. Yeah. But I mean, no, even third, so, third time, this is your third time running. It? So you, I, wait, what, I remember one time with Kucharski and Kucharski had a bad day. Yeah. And I ran it like six years ago, seven okay. years ago. Yeah. I wonder, were we running at the same time? Yeah. Huh. I ran with you, dude. <laughs> Like not for the whole time, but for the first half or first eight or nine miles. Was that like one of the faster bastards ones where? Yeah, there's a lot of faster bastards. And you, I think you were a little annoyed because I kept trying to, you were like, dude, if you need to go past me, pass me. Cause I was kind of chomping at the bit to go. Uh, and then eventually that, I, I think did. that was a good year for me. That one, I think I was uh, like five hours and something. That was a good. Was yeah. Good. Yeah. But no, we definitely ran that, that year together. For a little bit. That makes sense. Yeah. I also left a, a glove in the woods. Yeah. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Luckily, I didn't have any of that. No GI issues yesterday or on Saturday. That's for, that's that's a champion. Did I tell you the first time I ran hat, I ate an entire tray of Stouffer's lasagna the night before? Uh, okay. That's I was like, I need to carb up. I mean, that makes sense. I feel you know? like you've definitely told this story. And uh, yeah, it, I ran the entire hat. I didn't go to the bathroom and ran the entire hat with an entire tray of Stouffer's inside of me. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't stay frozen at all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I ate a chicken parmesan sub the night before. What Did you have anything fantastic as a reward? Afterwards, I didn't know because you know after the race you're kind of not feeling like you want to eat a lot. Mm -hmm. So I had some of the stuff at the. They have pierogies that, like you mentioned, always amazing. What about on Sunday though? No, so so well first right after the race I got in and like I said the wind was just coming through that pavilion like, and if you went right over the hill where the finish line is it didn't touch you but <laughs> just in the pavilion so I'm trying to change. As quick as I can. And by the way, shout out to I'm trying to think of the gear that I wore. That so the socks I wore smart wool. I mean, uh, not smart wool. Swiftwick merino socks, and that was alpaca alpaca socks. Those are nice. They keep your feet pretty nice. Shape. Those are what I wore yesterday for the long run. Yeah, I think it's called the company's Paca, right? P A K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And I I just put Vaseline all over my feet before the race. No blisters. Mm. So that was good. Um, and then the Myler running shorts, my favorite, the tights, the or half the, tights. Yeah. Yeah. I love those things. Um, and then that's what I wore at that Annapolis half. Okay. The, yeah. I love those. Yeah. They're like my favorite shorts. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. But then, so I changed. Those are the, in case people are following, those are the work part of the work collection. Yeah. Yeah. I'll drop links. But then, so after the race, I changed, and I was so, because that wind, I was just shivering like crazy. And once I got down to the, we watched uh, Ryan, we waited for Ryan to come in. He was about, I think, like a half an hour behind me. And then we uh, went to a brewery afterwards and had, had a beer, bought the worst beef jerky of my entire life. <laughs> mm. See, we used to throw, one reason I kept doing the hat, because I was always like, I never want to do this race again. 
but we used to throw a party after hat. Oh, at your house? Yeah, and we. Thanks. Where was it this year? Well, we did. We didn't. We. We didn't run at, but um, still could have had the party. <laughs> yeah, we could. We, I mean, it used to. We actually, at one point, I was living in an apartment building, and we had like, we got the whole thing practically catered, and Whoa. did like the commons area. That's awesome. And but the parties got pretty rambunctious. Like, like I would go out and get like cases of vodka and beer and stuff like that. And we'd come back to the house, and it would be gone by the end of the night. So imagine running hat <laughs> yeah. and then coming back to our house and just bunch of runners. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of runners just sitting there telling their day story, drinking and, and somehow and, we'd always end up dancing and I don't understand how we had energy for that, but there was always dancing. Yeah. yeah. There was, there was dancing. There was some weird stuff that happened okay. at some of these parties. A little I, NSFW stuff. Yeah. Some weird, don't, weird stuff yeah. going down. Um, but yeah, so we used to have a killer party. So every year I'd be like, I'm not going to run it again. And people will be like, hey, can we stay at your house? And I'll be like, shit. All right, I'll sign up. Because you don't want to, you can't party if you didn't run. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. And you had to dust off the Crisco Twister set. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Have a good time. The slip and slide. <laughs> um, um, yeah. I So I basically, I, we went to brewery, brewery, had a beer, and I came home, and I, uh, Kimmy had made pad thai for dinner. And I was like, well, that works. Like that's fine for me. I do like so. that. What did, what did we used to eat at the party? Because we would have. I mean, we had to eat because we were drinking that much. I don't recall. <laughs> yeah. Stouffer's lasagna, probably <laughs> trays of. I think we yeah. just order pizzas or something. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. You can't go wrong with pizza. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, so I forgot the. On the last mile, when I was, yeah, maybe less than that mile, I was about to come out of the woods, and I it's hard to pick up your feet at that point. So I had kicked a root and almost bit face planted and caught myself. But I, like I had a char, I got a Charlie horse in my calf. Uh. I was like, dude, did I just pull like tear my <laughs> calf muscle? It hurt so bad. And then, and that was a good thing too. I, I didn't have any cramping the whole time. Which so what happened to the Charlie horse? Impressive. It just went away. It went away. Probably the salt. Yeah. <laughs> it, it pretty much went away. And then I ran across the field and then, course uh as i'm crossing this the road and coming back into the final the final final yeah. stretch of 100 yards i which is uphill i landed and tweaked my ankle almost rolled in i was like dude i need to be done with this race because it <laughs> it's about to happen wait i thought you were gonna say you <laughs> fell because that would have been the best because there's people watching yeah, at yeah. That well, point. I, that's the thing like were there people watching because it had with that rain it had stopped raining at that point so there were you know, some of the, not that many people, but some of the faster bastards were watching. And so it was nice to have them at the end, especially people who, like our friend Dave Carpenter, first 50K ran a 520. <laughs> In those conditions. I don't Crazy. even know. Like, that's wild. Yeah, he's been working hard. I've seen him out there running in the morning sometimes. And I'm like, wow, he's cruising. Like, I'm like, yeah, because I wouldn't. In the past, I wouldn't have said, "Oh, he's one of the faster, faster bastards." Right. He was like middle pack. Now he's he's betraying. He, he's. I felt like he was one of us. Now he's trying to yeah. level up. What's you, up, dude? It's That's him and, up. and Paul Gochar. They're both trying to. <laughs> they're like trying to get that the social security card fast. Yeah. Fast pass. <laughs> yeah. No, he did great. And, yeah. Um, but I would say overall, it was probably one of my favorite races. That's awesome. Just felt. Just because you felt in the like yeah. right headspace the whole time, yeah. And I think that's if you can just throw out the time goals and not worry about whether. I think people put too much weight on that. And I get it. You train for a long time. It's it's letting go of that stuff though that does seem to lead to at least the the races. I'm I try to look back because you know we're in the middle of training now, and I look back at the races where. I, had a really good time. And most of the races I really enjoyed mm -hmm. were the ones where it wasn't kind of binary on the time, the finish time. Right. You know, like I was running with a friend or doing something like that. So they definitely, um, I mean, you love New York, Meg. And that was you and Meg running together and throwing a party for 26.2 miles. Yeah, that now, might be my favorite. And it's not a sub three hour marathon, but... No, like it's not a, even close. 
like of your memories of marathons, where does that one land? It's top two for sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And I feel like, yeah, if you can get, because I I think a lot of runners, even myself, when you first start out, especially, especially when you're doing better each race that you do, time is such a major thing. But once you can just enjoy running, not for the time that you're getting, I feel like that's, it's so much better because <laughs> then you don't, it's not everything in your life is tied up on whatever time you get. Um, and I think it's, yeah, like if you can just base it off how you felt, how you did in that moment, I feel like it's much more rewarding, <laughs> at least for me. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I I do like having time goals in some instances simply because I think it's like you have something to work towards. Yeah. Oh, no, I think it's, yeah, sorry. I don't mean to say you shouldn't have those time goals, but just to to put all of your worth into that, whether you get that time. 100%. But then also to be able to have that flexibility if it is a crazy weather day, like to mm-hmm. not be so like I stuck to that time mm-hmm. where you can't let that go. Like that's, that's not fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are exceptions. Like I don't know that I'll run another marathon if it's over 70 degrees at the start. Like I like you won't even start it. I, I don't think I will. Like I've I don't, never had yeah. a good experience that way. It's never been. Uh, what if you just jog it though? I don't know how people, <sighs> what was that one Chicago that was 90 degrees? Yeah. Yeah. People how, PR'd how? that day. How would you, yeah. how would you actually run that? <laughs> I don't even understand. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, that's the thing. Dead we have, miles. W- because we know that our group of the fast, but you, there's people that excel in super cold temps mm-hmm. there's people who excel and super hot and you know it, you can do it but me in the like i know once it gets above like 60 like i absolutely performance starts I, I absolutely agree with that but i don't think i wouldn't start like if i'm there and i have a bib and it's like you train i think i would just go jog it yeah, but here's the thing, like you could just not run it and then reload for another marathon. I guess if there was a plan B, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, second check in. We're gonna stick with the Robbie theme this week. Okay. So Robbie's running. He's prepared though. He's got backup shoes, he's got backup socks, he's got gear, he's got it all going. This is called planning. And for your big runs, you need to do that. So make sure that you're getting the right amount of nutrition packed with you, that you've got everything that you need for that run. Know if it's going to be sunny and you need sunglasses. Know if you need a hat. Know if you need a rain jacket. It sounds kind of simple, but a lot of times we leave the house with one thing missing and it can really throw our run sideways. So make sure you're prepared when you get out there. All right, let's take a little hydration break, Meg. Today's sponsor is, again, Element. I'm drinking it right now. We love drinking it all the time. Thomas is drinking it right now. And some of the benefits of the electrolyte beverage are that it maintains steady energy. It improves your cognitive function. You suffer from fewer headaches, which Robbie can attest to. 100%. It's a game changer in that department after a long run. You experience fewer muscle cramps, which I can attest to for sure. And it's just, it helps your performance in general. Yeah. And I've got a couple special recipes for you. Definitely try mixing it with club soda or sparkling what do you call it seltzer water sparkling water yeah Yeah. try it with that over ice pretty good it's a nice treat if you want a little hydration treat and a little kick you can even mix this with a little bit of vodka or tequila (laughs) make your own ranch water it's pretty good but i use it for pretty much everything all right and if you want to get some element yourself you can actually get a free sample pack with any order if you use our link which is drink lmnt.com slash the drop. Now back to the show. So you know how hat has really good swag. Yeah. For, oh yeah, what was it? So it was an umbrella. I know, I saw it. Like a golf crossing. umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I was like, this is perfect because it can also be used as a cane because. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, so no blanket? Uh, no, no blanket. This the bl- oh the no, blanket's that's NCR. NCR. Blanket's NCR. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I think they did do one hat blanket. Yeah. And that's where NCR got the idea I from. Say, I feel like I have a hat blanket. Yeah. It's but gray. The, the problem with the blankets are like the pallets of those blankets 
are extremely heavy. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. So we've got six. We don't need any more. (laughs) Yeah. So the umbrella was nice. By the way, one of my favorite. Did you get a mug too? No, because I didn't. That's for people who placed. Oh. Like age group placements. Okay. Thanks for rubbing it in. Sorry, buddy. Just kidding. Oh, we'll, so make, free fourth? we'll give you a oh, I was going to say that would have been a hard fall. Be a That's the funny thing is that Dave Carpenter, who very respectable time at 520, is only an hour, not even an hour slower than number one overall. He was like 13th in his age group. What? Because, <laughs> because ultra runners are just middle-aged men. <laughs> that's all it is. Is people ages 40 to 50. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> it was so far back. It mm. was ridiculous. But um, have you, let me ask you if you've done this before. So one of my favorite things that hacks in a trail race, I don't even know if it's a hack, is I never use walking or what do you call it? Poles. Trekking mm-hmm. poles. Trekking poles. But there are some people who use them, which honestly probably a good idea. They, okay. So I used trekking poles at hat one year and had a phenomenal experience. Mm-hmm. And then they said the next year you can't use them. Right. So I think that's still in the rules, but maybe since this. Dude, with that weather and the mud, yeah. those would have been lifesavers. So I just, I've always done this. You I've never, up sticks. Yeah. I've never ah. seen anyone else do it, but I don't know why. I've seen, I've seen old men. I just find a <laughs> stick that's and right on the it. trail yeah. and use it. And it's super helpful. Yeah. Like in the really terrible uphills and yeah. even downhills. It saves your back. Yeah. And it's. I'm just not sure why nobody else does it because it's a, you just grab a stick and then throw a toss it off as soon as you're done with that you section. toss it off. Yeah. <laughs> we use that. I think it's for- a good idea. That's like, I, I think it's, it's not as good as the running in the light post shadow hack, but <laughs> it's, it's, I'll put it, I'll make a list of my favorite hacks. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you were able to find a chew on the ground, which was nice, but there's yeah. no change out there in the uh, woods. Nothing, yeah. Like I can't, I don't see the motivation for you going out there. <laughs> did not find anything. No, trekking poles though, like we did Trans Rockies and there's a, That's you do the, say. we use them. Yeah. And, and going over Bright Angel or what, what was They're it? They were money. Not Bright not, Angel. Um, I'm thinking Grand Canyon. Um, Hope Pass. Yeah. Mm. Like y- if you don't have poles, you're bent over trying to get up. So right. if you have poles, it, ke- it like saves your back. Yeah. And then, on the way down, you're bombing. It's like skiing. Yeah. So you have yeah. a way to like kind of pivot. And if you do twist your ankle or something, the pole will help you not right. like really do it bad and save you from falling on your face. Yeah. Maybe I should start running in the streets. With poles. <laughs> Tracking poles in the city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My back. I was stopping to crack my back like every half mile <laughs> towards <laughs> the end. Um, But yeah, that's a... Oh, is that you, Meg? Yeah. You're hungry. I was all excited. Those mics might have picked up. (laughs) (laughs) I was all excited this week because Meg got sick. So I thought maybe this week I'll beat her mileage-wise. Oh, so yeah, did you? It's because I I did 65 uh, miles this week. I'm like, and then I'm I'm like, Meg, did I actually get more miles than you? Because you skipped out of two workouts, basically. And did he? No, <laughs> you can't shake your head on a on a no, podcast. I ran sixty eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I almost felt like getting out of the car and running. Uh, if it had been a little closer to like that, my number, just getting out of the car and running. But yeah, ridiculous. Man, that's a that's that's a lot of miles for being. I saw the state that you were in last week. Well, it's it's funny because to me it feels like nothing because I'm. I knew what I was supposed to be doing. I was supposed to 90. have 92 and I was supposed to do two workouts. I did no workouts. Okay. And all my miles were very slow, but I managed to get some decent mileage in, which was helping my sanity for Boston. But yeah, he has me back on like a normal routine kind of. I had a rest day today, which was nice. Okay. Um, so but, right now I'm winning. Yeah. <laughs> for what? the week you have. And t- so you didn't run in the rain, but you and Jarrett did a, a long run. Yeah, we did a 20. I kind of switched it up. I did some Robbie Root in it. We basically ran out towards Dundalk okay. and did the, like there's like a big hill that you go up and down, basically. What was nice about it is because we've done an 18, a 20 miler of doing that one route that we were doing that just shoots you straight up into the, towards the county. Uh-huh. Uh, by doing the Dundalk loop, we were already at like, we're, 
I fell last last week with you at like three point seven. That was like we were already at um like ten or something like okay, that. Okay, nice. So yeah, we just ran up and then came back down. We ran into Jeremy Ardenoy. Dude's throwing down six ten minute miles <laughs> for Casual. like no what are you training for? No, just none. Right. So, yeah. Of course. Um twenty miles. But we were able to get uh I think we got around um nine maybe a thousand feet of elevation just a little over 900 that's pretty yeah. good um 900 which was the goal was to do a hilly hilly run yeah and i um i ended up running in the uh diodora for quenza okay and it's kind of an interesting shoe i mean can we get into it now um or, yeah yeah so it's diodora we really liked the style of their shoes mm-hmm. but in the past the foams just weren't kind of like yeah up to snuff right and they finally kind of switched up some of their foams and this one has a super critical midsole yeah and it feels pretty light for sure um looks like it has a decent amount of rubber on it too yeah so i ran in it the day before on the treadmill and did eight miles and i was like maybe this shoe is too soft Mm -hmm. and i was like i'll see on the road Mm -hmm. so i took it out for the 20 and um it's actually not as soft on the road, so it felt pretty good. I, I'd compare it to like a 1080 or a Nimbus. So oh, it's like an easy daily trainer? Wait, interesting, because I feel like this is supposed to be their tempo shoe. Oh. Yeah, so I do think it's supposed to be a tempo shoe. I think the weight is is probably almost there. I didn't weigh mine yet, but okay. I think it, it does feel a little bit lighter. But no, I'd, I'd put it square in that. Like daily trainer, okay. Um, high, highly cushioned. Interesting. I mean, it's still Peace. not bad. Not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. It says quick workouts and tempo runs. <laughs> well, I guess I went too far with it. Um, yeah, it wasn't a quick workout or a tempo run. I will prove them wrong yeah. for fast workouts and races over short distances, five k or ten k. Okay. <laughs> okay. I wore the wrong shoe for a twenty mile. <laughs> 20 mile run. I like that. You went into it blind and you thought this is what. Yeah. That's interesting. I would, I, that's, uh, I did not read what the shoe was for I mean, before. I, I mean, just looking at it, I see no reason why it couldn't be used for longer distances. Yeah. They, I don't, does they, it they say put what this the in the low kind? cushioning. Can you tell um, me what the, that? That is ridiculous. There has to be at least 35. Yeah. Maybe more. I think there's more. Yeah. Like under cushioning, there's low, regular, high, and extreme, and it's in low. But I don't see. Um, this is not low. It, has it just a, says eight millimeter drop. Uh, it has to be at least 34. Well, I mean, if you put your, it does come up on the sides a little bit. I mean, I, I felt it was well cushioned. All right. Yeah. And there's right. a carbon plate. Is it real? <laughs> That's what it says. Get out of here. There's no carbon plate in this. Lightweight and ultra responsive for Quenza, weighing in just 230 grams, slivers propulsive, akin to shoes fitted. Oh. Fit, uh, akin to shoes fitted with the carbon oh, okay. plate. Okay. Yeah, that's what it felt like to me. It felt like they used a uh, more racy foam, but without a plate. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no. To me, it was. It felt really cushioned. Okay, it looks cushioned. Yeah, looks and nice. boy, that just blew my mind that it's supposed to be a five k, ten k ratio because it it felt pretty cushioned. I may have to reevaluate my thoughts, but yeah, off the cuff, like just going, I would have told you it, it was. Uh, Nimbus okay. 1080. But it feels maybe a little bit lighter than those shoes? Yeah, maybe a little bit lighter. Okay. But the cushioning, like I was, when I was on the treadmill, I didn't I say to you, Meg, it might be too soft? Yeah, you did. All but right. you said I would love it. Yeah, I said, Meg, you love it. It's soft and cushy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Robbie, now I need you to well, get I, it on. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably run it this week at some point, or at least for sure next week. So. Yeah, I might wait to do, I was going to just go ahead and do the video review because I've already got 20 miles on it, but I think I might have to wait till yeah. you try it because I got. We need a second opinion. I, I got really cushy vibes off. Yeah, of it. hold up a little bit on that. Now, what was I gonna say about that? I forget what's it say for the price on that one eighty or something. Oh, uh, one eighty. Okay. So you and Jarrett ran up, and I mean, you guys are looking pretty good. You've been putting in some big long runs. Yeah, I've I've been averaging now. Uh, I've got like. It, like four weeks over 60 miles. So I did one take back week when we did the, um, the 
Annapolis. Annapolis half. Uh, half. Mm -hmm. That one kind of came back. And that, when you were talking about your race and you felt pretty good the whole time, that was how I felt at the Annapolis half. And I was kind of like, I'm just going to run and not worry about the time. Yeah. Like it's going to be what it's right, going to be. Right. I think that works and doesn't work because there's part of it that I'm like, could you push a little harder? But it's also like how much, I don't know how much pain I want to be and, in. And it's not particularly a goal no. race. So do you, what's the point? <laughs> sort of. Yeah. It's kind of like, all right. Like I do feel like I, I want my mantra to be for Boston is like, this is one day. Yeah. One day out of my life that I have. Yeah. Just like that. Just, just do it today. Like just give it, do it, it all. Give it an honest effort. Yeah. And I think even for me too, with the trail race, I knew I'm doing Boston in a few weeks. So I didn't also didn't want to go crazy, crazy hard. I was wondering about that because I was like, okay, you kind of switched gears about two weeks ago where you were like, the hat 50k was your thing yeah and then you're like hmm well i can run boston and hat will be in it switch from hat being kind of like your goal race to boston being your goal race mm -hmm. yeah and, and I, I was like i wonder how hat's gonna play out like we have cherry blossom that we're supposed to jog yeah the week before boston oh yeah and i'm like you know how it is. You get <laughs> yeah. get out there. And it's For like, sure. will I be able to just chill? And be Especially like, in a ten mile race, that's hard to do. Yeah, but it's like flat. Yeah, It'll probably but be a cool day. Do you remember when we ran together that one time? And you stopped and got beers and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that was a good. So time. maybe if we all like, I don't know if Jarrett wants to. Yeah, Jarrett should want to run. Not even that was only a year ago. It seems like was that a year ago? Yeah, it's last year. We ran together last year. Oh yeah, because Jarrett Butler was there. Yeah, it's the only time I've run that race. Oh. Are you, you're not though this year. No. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's too bad because it'd be fun. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so maybe I'll try to get Jared to run it that way with me. And we can goof off and do fun stuff. Yeah, that'd be good. They always have good um, crowd support there too, and the crews come out. Uh huh. So just like, yeah, taking advantage of that is fun. I think that I don't think there's going to be any cherry blossoms left though. Because I was I was telling Thomas that I was like they're already bloomed. They're, and by the time we get down they there, they have been bloomed for yeah. a week. Yeah, I mean, if that was the only reason I was going there, I'd be bummed. <laughs> yeah. I don't really care. Yeah, the um, uh, but it is. I do love running with Jared. I don't. While he is kind and stuff, I don't think I'm as fun to run with as you would be for him, because you guys have more conversation. Yeah, you don't talk Tom's, that much. Thomas goes to dead silent when you're yeah. running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we managed to talk about some stuff. You're a pretty shitty long run partner. <laughs> yeah. At, there was one point where uh, Jared's just like, we hit like mile 14 and he's like, I'm done with this run. And yeah. I, well, he ran two miles before because he wanted to okay. get 22. And he's like, I, I think I'm just done with this run. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and it is kind of weird because you get to 14, you know, oh, I've only got six left. And that's when we turn around and start, stop going uphill. And start coming downhill. So I'm like, uh -huh. all right, let's go. And it was kind of like a, um, the last six miles were definitely yeah, a drag. That's all right. But I actually felt really good. That's good. That's awesome. I mean, feeling that good coming up with Boston a couple weeks will be three weeks. It's only three weeks, right? Guess yeah. what my long Two run is this week. Wild. What? 15. Oh, nice. Is it so? Is it kind of tapering down now? Yeah. He's he's starting me with it to okay. taper down. He uh, he's going to keep the intensity of some of the workouts up. Okay. By the way, I did want to shout out my coach, Greg, from Tree Line Endurance, who I'm working with through Training Peace, because I feel so bad for him because of all the ups and downs and weirdness of my training, and he's rolled with all the punches, <laughs> kept me going as best as I could, uh, and still got in some good workouts and stuff, and. I felt like I was that helped a lot for sure, like being prepared and especially for the hills and stuff. So, still rolling with him till Boston. So, that's cool. Nice. So, I wanted to give him a shout out. Um, and then I did want to mention, I feel like I have to mention the Barkley marathons. I know oh, everyone's yeah. covered. Oh, yeah. I know everyone's like, it's been world news or whatever, but I still, I keep going back to the photos and video of her 
finishing and I'm like, Bears, yeah. I don't know if I've, it's been a while since I felt like emotional about a runner because we see so many things happening that I'm just like, eh, whatever. They, there, there's a couple that stand out to me. I would say Sarah Hall at the London Marathon. That was a good one. When she outkicked the um, yeah. other girl. Uh, and then Kipchoge breaking the two. Yeah. I, well, for sure. And, and then this one, like, <laughs> the, it's kind of crazy. You think about how many minutes she's out there. Mm-hmm. And it came down to seconds. I mean, and well, she's out there for 58 hours. Yeah. Right. And it came down. She had a minute and a half or whatever. Mm-hmm. Left. 90. And she doesn't have a GPS watch. So she doesn't, you don't know how far you, like, actually how far you are. Because you don't know the distances, right. really. And so to know, especially when you're awake for 60 Wait a second. hours. Why wouldn't you have your GPS they don't let them. They don't let them use GPS. They just have a, the race is insane. They just have a Timex. <laughs> yeah. No, but like a, her Strava. <laughs> I know that's a well. Your your boy Scott Jurek, the Instagram account. They were like posted a thing that. about that. That was like not having it on your year end like uh-huh. metrics. <laughs> oh. Did that. I do a manual upload. Yeah, yeah. He had one this week that was just delightful. The oh. one that was the slides. Um, oh, oh, okay, yeah. Here's you didn't mention ones. her name. No, but they. Jasmine oh, Paris. Yeah, she's a British runner who has two kids. Yes, yeah, I think she's a veterinarian. Yeah, she's a veterinarian, two kids. I like they said she's a mum of two. Mum. M U M. But she has some records. A like, two-time mom. I think she did the, uh, the one mountain, FK. Yeah, like or, she's a very talented athlete for sure. Yeah, she's like, kind of like the Courtney DeWalter. That's right? what yeah. I was gonna say. Like, oh, I want, yeah. I want to see her and Courtney go at it. I mean, Courtney, she had, and it was be- better conditions this year, but Courtney didn't make it past loop four. She timed out on loop four when she did it. So just to see that, and knowing that it's not just running, it's also orienteering. Yeah. You have to use your compass and well, everything. People are like, ah, oh, that teaches Laz. I'm like, you don't think that Laz tongue in cheek is like throwing a challenge down? Dude, he wanted her to, obviously, yeah. he said that to get someone people, fired up to yeah. do it. Anyways, but w- the photos, especially that Howie Stern took, that he's yeah. one of the good, one of the best photographers out there. I was just like, you can feel it through the photo of what's happening. Well, was- also, because she was so expressive, like that was literally she was done. Like that was all that was left in her. It looked like her soul had just yeah. like you could see it in the <laughs> top right part of the picture, like leaving For her body. Sure. That'll do, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Man, but. I mean, I don't know. That's just a crazy thing to think about. Yeah, that's cool. So that was a cool thing that happened. All right, final check-in. And, of course, we're going to stick with the Robbie theme. So Robbie went out there, handled the situation, and got a little weird with his nutrition. The salt probably wasn't the best idea. But let me tell you something. As you're training and trying to prepare for a race, finding out how much nutrition you need is really important. If you haven't listened to Feel for the Soul, you should check it out. And one thing I've learned is I used to take my gels or my nutrition every five miles. And then I thought about it and I was like, I think I can get more in and more calories if I take it every four miles. And I've been practicing the fueling for that. And my stomach can handle it. And not only can it handle it, but having that extra energy is getting me through my runs. And even like when I'm finishing up a 20 mile run, I've taken four gels and I'm feeling pretty good. So the more that you can get in, the better you're going to feel, but you're going to need to play around and see what that is for you. And again, I probably would not recommend a tablespoon of salt in a glass of water, but that's just me. Seemed to work for Robbie. See you next week. Anything else that we forgot to cover for this week? Um, I, I don't like think so. Something. We will have details on all of the Boston events coming up for you um, this week. So follow us on social if you don't. But and Friday night, you want to go down, run down? No, I don't have details. Okay. <laughs> um, real quick, let me make sure I didn't have any poll results or anything that I had to share. I think I did from the last episode. Oh, I did ask the t-shirt collector thing. Mm. I was like, what level of t-shirt collector are you? 26% said they keep them forever. 
only the favorites with 63%. And then there's some don't cares, which I don't care. <laughs> who are those people? Are yeah. they the ones who have life or good shirts? I think so. <laughs> the, uh, the salt life. Salt life, yeah. Um, like there's some shirts that you probably do want to throw out. Yeah. Like if you bought a salt life shirt. But you turn those into rags for cleaning. Your car? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like especially if you're deader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of our friends... Uh, the friend, yeah, we talked about him that I ran with. He did not have such a great post race and ended up no bueno. vomiting all inside of his car on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel so bad for him. I congratulate him. I said, hey, congrats, Detter, on a, on a you know another 50K finish. He said, yeah, I don't think these are for me. I go, well, it's good to know yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he finished yeah. and then... He finished off the, his car's <laughs> life as well. I think he just had to impound, not impound, but uh, what do you call it? Burn Take it, it to the compactor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just smash it. <laughs> Dude, I've always wanted to just take an old car of mine and do the thing where you just charge people five bucks a hit or whatever. Just like they do at the carnival where you can smash the car to pieces. They bring an axe out there in a bag. Yeah. And yeah. But with my own car, maybe I should do that at a trail race. We should do a grit party that where I bring my old car, my 2009 Mazda 3, and just have people smash it to just pieces. Just go, go ham on it? Yeah. Would you do that? Would I hit it? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be for good. For five bucks? Yeah, for a good fundraiser, yeah. But the problem is if you get to the window first. That's, like, that's, the one, that's what you got to do is the first swings, because you know it's going to be glass. Yeah. Those have got to be $20 swings. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Like When I was a kid, my... Uncle on the farm just had a bunch of junk cars in the field because I, I don't even know why. They just, it's like if someone had a broken car, they would just say, drop it off here. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a ton of them. And that was before they reinforced the windows with plastic, you know? Mm -hmm. So we take our BB guns out there. And probably one of the best feelings in life is shooting a window with a BB gun and seeing it completely shatter to pieces. You know? Or spider web. Or, yeah, spider web. The whole thing just. So you know what I'm talking about because I, I know you unfortunately you've done, do. You've done worse stuff. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately I do. That's a different podcast though. Yeah, because it's incriminating. Yeah, <laughs> I think the statute of limitations has expired on that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not for people judging you. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I mean, slingshots, BB guns. Oh, yeah, all those twenty twos. <laughs> I wouldn't even care if. A kid just came around and just did that to my car. I'd almost be like, congratulations. You'd be like, fine. Well, I, I would tell you, my kid is totally romanticizes growing up in the 80s. He's like, what was that like? He wants to hear stories about it. And oh, man. All that stuff. And he's like, I wish it was like that now. Yeah. And I go, yeah, it was different. Go give him a slingshot. Let him have at it in the neighborhood. Dude, <laughs> it's not even that. It's like. I know. It's everything. He it had the just the freedom, like. We just didn't come home. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. you were just, like at the, their age, I was a total free range kid. Like I was like, I'll be home when I'm home. Yeah. Did you hear that? I think it's all right. Oh. It's yeah. probably Meg's computer. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you, there was no, no rules, no supervision. I think there's a little bit of a push to bring that back. I know we talked about it before, but because it's, it does give you that you know, kids need that in a way that independence and to learn what's cool what's not what's also strange to me is how many people who are past the age of college who are okay living at home yeah yeah it wasn't your first thing is like i want to get the kid yeah. out of here dude <laughs> no my parents too yeah it wasn't just me it was like all of us like yeah. hey <laughs> you're gone i mean i i lived there because i mean i was touring a lot so i wasn't home that much but I wish my parents would have kicked me out. Yeah, it's no. like, get out of here. Figure it out. Um, do, Dude, at 16, my dad was like, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I saw this preview for a horror movie that's coming out in May. Is it mm -hmm. called Beetlejuice? No. Oh. But it's basically taking the Jason concept and instead of having to pay for the rights to Jason and everything, just making a like kind of... A very related movie at a lake with a killer who's oh. like in the woods in the 80s 
and but it follows from over the shoulder perspective of the so killer. Blair Witch Killer. Um, not really. It's like following him, but it's like over the sh- you see everything, not his point of view, but like right behind him, which is kind of a cool idea. But I was like, yes, bring back the. 80 slashers make this <laughs> i'm like, good not having that <laughs> yeah kimmy's like don't i was like yeah. just watch the preview like they're not going to show anything she's like i would never watch this preview yeah. um i'm with kimmy but there's a cool i gotta st- go watch it now. there's a cool studio making good horror movies i think they're called shutter and uh that's where megan stayed what shutter oh shutter, yeah she shutters did. on the beach yeah that's right but did you see there's another movie called late night with the devil um, that's coming soon. That looks really good, dude. Um, I was so excited when I saw the Beetlejuice uh, preview. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yet. It's called In a Violent Nature. That's the the sp- Jason spinoff one. Mm. Apparently, it got really good. It was that Sundance? It got really good reviews. But not that Megan's like just stop talking about it. Yeah, I mean, I'll never see that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Any movies that you are looking forward to make? No. <laughs> I haven't heard of anything coming out that sounds good. All right. Wait, did you know that Margot Robbie is coming out with a Sims movie? Oh, really? Like the Sims yeah. game? She just did. Bar- she just did Barbie, and now she's gonna <laughs> do the Sims. Is that like her? Like that's her genre now? I think so. Interesting. I think I forgot f- that she was in the Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did like that movie. That was. That's a good movie. Um, I think as a female, I'm supposed to really like the Barbie movie, and I thought it was so weird. I I haven't seen it, so I can't comment. But you, you didn't like it? I mean, no. There's no way that it wasn't overblown. It was laughable. The, like, the a lot hype. of it, I was like, what? Okay. I'm going to really upset people. I went and saw the Dune part two. Uh-huh. Special effects are really nice. There's some really cool stuff in it. They are destroying the story, and they totally are taking oh, the... Really? the Whatever it is that's going on in society now, they're blending that into the movie. Like this guy, the like read the original Dune. Uh-huh. Like I, I don't even know. Like they turned him into a moody teenager with a moody girlfriend, and oh, uh, yeah, yeah, and he's no longer this person. Like, so wh- who was he? And I never read the Dune stuff. So originally, to cut it to the short, Moadi Paul Atreides was a product of genetic manipulation by this witch is called the Bene Gesserit that are looking for the super being. <laughs> and this is why I didn't ever Dude, watch this I mean, can, can I call it in a trans? Can I use a lifeline to get a translator? <laughs> it's like, I'm so out. <laughs> it's like, it's, I know. I bet it's cool if you know what's going on. It's very cool if you yeah. know what's going on. And the original in the book, the kid is driven by the fact that his father is basically politically assassinated okay i like that. that's a good premise and so he goes he's abandoned in the desert he finds these people he gets them all organized to take over the planet mm-hmm. basically and he does it through one of the key things was this thing called a weirding module mm-hmm. which you could turn sound into violence Ooh, that's okay. a cool concept they got rid of that all Really? In the movie, they don't even... Yeah, there's Is no, that a key element in it's the... It's a very key element because it's it's a step. First, they need to use technology to do it, and then he learns to do it without technology. Okay, so and that's all gone? All gone in this movie. And... You're going to have to put, like, a spoiler alerts on this podcast oh, episode. Yeah. So in, in this movie, he's like... I don't know if I'm the same. Like, I'm not the Messiah. I am not the chosen one. This is all propaganda from the witches. They came and they planted the seed so that, you know, it's like, <laughs> and, his, and Zendaya, who is in the original movie, him and Shani, it's a love story. Uh-huh. They get together and the, they together basically conquer this planet and okay. th- overthrow the emperor. Yeah. And the, so are they independent so, of each other in this? Well, she's all like moody, like she's angry at him most of the movie. Okay. Like, oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, and like, there's not really love. And also, in the movie, he, there's no man can drink this stuff. Only the women can drink it, and it takes him. But there's a place that the women can't go because only a man can go there. Uh huh. Okay, so there's like parallels to yeah. And so it he, the sleeper must awake is the main character, like it unlocks 
this character. Mm-hmm. And in this movie, they're just like, oh, yeah, he drank. He kind of can now see oh. the future. But it's not like. Okay, not a huge. It's not like a huge, oh, this is why they've been breeding women and keeping it from okay. breeding a man because the man would become. It, so it was really like, and I, so I showed, I, I thought I, I was just losing my mind, but I was like to my son, he was like, do you do like the eighties version better or this version? Mm-hmm. And I saw it when I was the same right. age as my son. Yeah. So we put on yesterday, we watched the original movie. Is which, that the David Lynch one? Yeah. Okay. Which one? Uh, to, to, no. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that one kind of, follows the book better to me uh-huh. than the the current the current one and one it tells the entire first two movies of the current one in one movie okay so you get the whole story in one movie gotcha and my son watched it and he goes okay i see why you like this one better yeah and i see and you so and the great thing is now he's reading the book oh that's cool so he, yeah go. he's 12 oh, you know, like, yeah that's yeah. awesome um but yeah, it, it's uh it's pretty. Yeah, I feel like that's the thing is I don't know. I feel like when you put too many things, like try to put it through the lens of whatever's going on, it's just like, come on, like just It was a book. Yeah. Like stick to the story. Yeah. It'll work. Write a different it story. It was a best selling like yeah. it was like a huge pop hugely popular thing. It'll work. Yeah, yeah I feel you. Um, I, I, there's two, I think, well, there you go. Yeah. That, there you go. That's a, our movie, movie report. Siskel and Ebert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyhow, yeah, I yeah. feel like I was going to mention something else, probably completely ridiculous and unrelated to that, but <laughs> so it's, yeah, I won't get into it. I was going to ask more questions about Dune. I think we covered it. You can ask me a question. I love Dune. Right. <laughs> that was my favorite. All right. I read all the books. I read so his son wrote books after his dad, Frank mm-hmm. Herbert, wrote books. Okay. The first ones, the original Dune movies uh, or Dune books. And then um, when he passed away, he also had uh, like transcripts and ideas and notes. Mm-hmm. So his son, Brian Herbert, took those and expanded the universe okay. and did like some prequel stuff. And, gotcha. Yeah. And it's like fascinating. Yeah. And this is also a guy that in the 50s predicted that AI would be a problem for mankind. Oh, wow. Well, he's right. <laughs> it definitely will be. So, And that's when they develop human computers. I like it. Cool. <laughs> what do you think, babe? Man, yeah, I'm, I haven't been listening for the past. Like, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I give, have zero interest in this. What was it? You were going to give something? What was it? Zero what? <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> There's someone out there. There's a plenty of people out there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Speaking of uh, AI, I I saw a version. We were talking about Oasis last week. I get all these Oasis reels, but there was a version of Don't Look Back in Anger where the AI had Liam singing it instead, and you cannot tell the That's difference. That's so weird. And he never sang the song. Like, uh-huh. it's just his you know, simulated vocals in it. And I'm like, this sounds freaking awesome. (laughs) And it's not even real. Like at what point, like if you like Oasis. Yeah. What point are you going to just, I'll make their next album myself. That's the thing you can, you really could, we're in the beginning stages of AI. So you could do that. And some of the, there are albums out there on YouTube that are like that that made up, completely made up and they're pretty good. (laughs) They're not bad. They're better than some of, of the voice of songs for sure. So I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird time to be alive. Just need AI to replicate, to do my Strava results <laughs> without all the, wouldn't flag, it be the I, all the red flags in it that are going to get the runner's world. I was going to say, wouldn't editor. you be upset? Oh, you mean by cutting the courses? Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't you be upset though if AI was like, eh, this is where we think you should be. <laughs> it's not yeah, that like, come on, dude. It's basically what chorus my chorus app says. <laughs> and it's a version of AI. Take a nap. That's true. My chorus app, I'll bet you even right now, the dude's probably hunched over. Like he's always you know it's how you just get the heart rate based. You know how you get that little guy? No, it's like recovery. Yeah, he's hunched over. Look. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> You're in the it, it, what it is, it's like a little dude with his hands on his knees bent over saying, 
You are 10% recovered. Mine's hands on the hips, so I'm fatigued, but I'm not completely Well, you took a done. completely day off, though. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow I have the day off. Um, all right. Anyways, well, thanks for listening, people. <laughs> Is there anything else we have to do? There's the Boston shakeout stuff coming up. You said we're going to be yeah. posting about that soon. More I think details pe- next week. People are asking about the RSVP stuff. Yeah, it'll be out there this week. All right. And then... Obviously, we're going to be at Broken Arrow in June. You should definitely sign up for that. Yep. And come out. And, yeah, good luck to everyone running spring races coming up. Yeah. When's, it, when's it, London? London is a week after Boston. Boston, yeah. Okay. Anything else major coming? Uh, cherry Blossom. Yeah. Uh, I, I that's can't. About it. Yeah, I can't think of. what's What are other spring marathons? There's a bunch. I don't know. <laughs> if you're training and you're getting into taper weeks, good luck to you. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening and following along. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Mom. And thanks to Carl for editing this up. Man behind the scenes. Uh, sometimes in front of the scenes. Sometimes making a scene. Mm-hmm. But thanks, Carl. All right. Bye.